Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by former King of the Cage lightweight champion Tony Hervey. Tony, how are you? How you doing? Doing good. That's good. That's good. Tony, take me back to the beginning. How'd you get started in mixed martial arts? Um, kind of fell into it. Um, I was working in a gym uh, when I was like about 16, 17, and uh, they happened to come in my gym and they were there for maybe a couple months before I uh, got enough nerve to actually ask them if they needed uh, a lightweight. Uh, since then, uh, I started with a... Uh, uh, not sure if they want me to drop their name or not, but I started with Brennan Cleveland here in Michigan, and then I moved over to uh, James Lee's camp later on, uh, maybe two, three years later on, when I got ready to start my uh, pro debut. Where do you train now? Right now? Yeah. That's the problem. Um, Michigan is, is kind of hurting in a lot of different ways. Um, we... Technically, we were supposed to be given an opportunity to to actually rise, I would say, lack of better words, to our full potential. Um, we don't really have camp. Uh, we're, we're pretty individualized right now. Um, and I, I, would, I, I don't necessarily want to blame people, but I believe that the people that necessarily um, were higher than me, I should say, they didn't take the time to actually fix it. And they, they, it was all about money to them. Is that a problem with there? there's not a lot of, of shows that go on, or is it a problem of just the, the fighters not wanting to kind of share secrets? What, what what do you see as the main problem for that? Well, I, was, I, I believe that the main problem is the fact that there's lack of shows that are put on, especially on a pro level. Um, there, there's not many promoters that are actually willing to uh, look into how to construct a, a, a good league, I should say. Um, wow, there, I mean, there's really a lot of things going on with this. I Be mean, well, because I'm from Michigan and I don't see hardly any pro shows. All I see is amateur shows left and right, but I hardly ever see a pro show and the only pro show that comes around is usually King of the Cage Donna Frio usually comes in and does one show but really there's there's not a lot of opportunity is that why you've had to go to different places to get fights? Yes, actually um, I, I mean I've gone out of the country um, more so for the opportunities because my hometown doesn't necessarily believe in, in building up their, their potential um we have a lot of talent, and I, I've seen it. I've watched it um, over the years. Even even with the, the amateurs, I've watched them, and they're developing. But do you know that once they're ready to turn pro, they, they don't even know which way to go. Right now, I'm being requested, ask, come, can I come train with you? Can I be here? Can I be there? I believe that with the opportunities that we that I have, I can put people in, in, in very good positions. But the problem is it's, it's the, the egos that are out here that don't necessarily want to say, hey, uh, come train at my camp, but they don't want to help build the whole entire structure of the camp. They just want to say, well, we have jiu-jitsu and we have Muay Thai, and then that's pretty much it. They're not looking at, like, from a whole mixed martial arts perspective. There's a lot more things that a lot of fighters need, you know, as far as, far as health and nutrition, but at the same time, you don't just have to sit there and spar the whole time as athletes. You should be able to go and get conditioning not elsewhere other than just sitting and, and pushing weights. You know, uh, for lack of, lack of better words, I mean, honestly, I have to reference a lot of different things, but like swimming, things like that. There, I mean, um, you remember Holyfield actually used to do ballet, matter of fact, just to have the coordination. I'm, I'm a big believer in dancing. I, I mean, I'm an original b-boy. Um, so I used to break dance for like, for some years, actually. And that's helped me in development of my, my hand-eye foot coordination, things like that, timing my hands with my feet. It was because of the fact that I did dance. A lot of people don't realize that the fighters that, that come in, you know, 
they either have a lot to offer as far as like their athletic ability, but they get so shoved in a box when they get ready to come to like I guess um, the mixed martial arts page. They're like, oh, I fought a couple times, but they're they're so narrow minded. Does that make sense? Yes. When you got into this game from the from the perspective of, of training camps and all that kind of stuff. Has it not changed at all? Is it the same from when you started till now? Has it not evolved at all? Uh, I believe it, it's evolved outside of the box, but I think that individuals still kind of have like a narrow perspective on it. Does that make? I mean, that that, that actually would make a lot more sense. They have, it's like the game has developed. The game has been extremely. Um, thriving, I should say, but I, I believe that the fighters that are coming into it are, are still like, hey, you know, we're mixed martial artists, and, and, but we don't feel like full professionals. Like, I personally don't feel like I'm a full professional. I feel that, you know, the NBA, the NFL, and NBA, NBL are, are so much more further ahead than where the real perspective of mixed martial arts should be. You have... UFC that technically dictates and they're monopolizing. They're, they're buying everybody else that, that is their competition or merging with them. You know, that, I mean, but if they go around and say, well, hey, we want five, five minute rounds as our main event, guess what everybody else does? They follow suit. The problem is nobody actually governs anything as of right now when it comes to mixed martial arts. How did you get the nickname Lionheart? <laughs> Um, I kind of fell into that also. Um, it, it kind of found me. Uh, since I started as an amateur, I mean, I've taken probably most of my licks as an amateur. Not many people realize I'm 69 and 3 as, a, as an amateur. I was fighting like how many times? Uh, uh, countless times in a, in a week. Sometimes I fight two, three times in a week. And that's how Lionheart came about was when I refused to give up. I refused to just fall down and let you just beat on me. I can take an iron kick to the face. I can take a, a couple brutal gomi knees to the face. I just refused to give up. And that's where Lionheart came from. What would you say is the highlight of your career? Is it the knockouts that you've had over guys like Alberto Crane? Is it winning the title? What, what is the highlight of your career? You know, that's a good question. Um, wow. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I got to a highlight yet, but I would say that I've had some had some good inside the inside my my career. You know, I've pretty much put myself in a position that I believe in nothing but knockouts. Um, I don't think that submissions actually make champions. You know, I, I think that if you come in there and yeah, your 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 thing is to submit, but you come in and you you tap somebody, is that really telling me that you you can beat me? When you stand up toe to toe with somebody and you actually deliver as many punches as possible, but you see that that man's not going to fall, that's really going to show the character of you. That's going to show if you're going to really break. So I I, I my my um. My record is extremely deceiving. They come in, they submit, but they only get me with one type of submission because they know they can't get grab me with any other one. They're, they're afraid of it. So I get hit with a rear naked choke or I get beat by decision. But when you look at my winning side, I finish the fight. I don't hesitate or waste any time. I actually come in to fight. So I would say that I believe I'm a knockout king. What exactly is your record? I, I've looked online. I've seen a thousand different things. I've seen 13 and 11. I've seen 12 and 10. I've seen 11 and 10. I've seen 10 and 11. I've seen so many different things. What exactly is your record? Well, Pro wise. In my eyes, because everybody else seems to have it all messed up, you know. Officially, I'd be 14 and 11. And coming off a recent loss. And you touched on it a little bit earlier. What is the one thing that your record fails to show? Well, I believe that it, 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 and if you're looking at it from like a higher perspective, like uh, UFC top as being the A class, you're looking at me and you're saying, well, he either finishes his fights or 
we can only submit them. But you still got that, that maybe that 30% that we can actually ride it out and we can actually win by decision. I think that when you look at my record, you're seeing a guy that basically finishes fights. He, he doesn't, I mean, I don't go in there and win by decision. You don't really see my record winning by decision. I don't have any decision wins. So I think that from like, the A class to the B class, and I would say like a B class would be like somebody like XFC or um, uh, shoot, I don't even know because I I've been around I guess the B class the whole time. You fought at 155. You have a little bit of experience at 145. What is your walk around weight? I'm curious. I walk around at about 160. And are you, that's about to change also. Are you planning to drop down to 45? Is that what you're kind of hitting at? ADM Entertainment, they, they came out with a song that was, you know, basically about you. How did that all come about? Did you seek out them? Did they seek out you? How did that all come together? Actually, my wife um, did that. Uh, she she knew them from when they used to work for her. Um, back in, I don't remember what job she had at the time, but she, she knew them. And uh, they, they were into music. I had another guy um, named Joey B who also made another album track for me. And they came to me and they asked me, hey, would you like to, like to work with us? I was like, sure. So when they actually came out with the track, I mean, I think it speaks from the heart from when they actually, they, they talk about who I am as a person, you know, within the track. And uh, Lionheart is 100% me. Uh, if you were able to walk around in my house, I have Lion memorabilia everywhere. Not necessarily myself, but I love Lion. In the in the song, it talks about uh, your family. Is that what motivates you? Your family? Yes, one hundred percent. And when you got started, did you have any goals? And if so, what are some goals that you've accomplished, and what are some goals still out there for you to reach? Well, when I first started, I mean, I guess everybody's initial plan is to go to the UFC. But as I guess my career has gone on, I looked at it like. I've seen the holes within the MMA, mixed martial arts. Okay, I, I, I mean, I'm from Michigan, but nobody in Michigan really knows who I am. I never really fought here as a pro, let's put it that way. As a pro, I had to go all the way up to up north. Not many of my friends want to come all the way up north or they're charging high rate prices for um, tickets. But um, my goal, I guess, uh, back then was to be in the UFC, but... As time went on, I guess my new goal is to get to a point where my wife doesn't have to work unless she wants to. My late mother-in-law, I mean, she passed away. She spent about two weeks um, in the hospital, but she worked every single day up until that point. And her only real vacation was when she was in the hospital, and then she passed away. I don't want to see my wife like that. And I'll be damned if I actually will see that. So, I mean, if that's what, like, a future goal, that's an ongoing goal that I'm working towards. As far as mixed martial arts, um, I have another goal. and But right now, that can't necessarily be disclosed. But as of right now, it's something that will help and, and change the mixed martial arts perspective and, and actually, well, allow aspiring fighters to have something to look forward to for the for the years to come. You had 
four fights in 2011. Next year, is, is four fights good for you? Is that the right amount of fights, or would you like to take more, less? What's good for you? Uh, I would like to take less eventually, but um, as of right now, four seems to be what I would like to do and maintain, and um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do four up until I can. I'd like to stay busy, but I would like to take smart fights. I'm not just going to walk in and take four fights and just with anybody. Tony, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? Anything you want to say to the fans? Tony, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Thank you.